Alright, today I'm going to be taking my personality test. I am at 16personalities.com. They have a test there you can take. It's absolutely free and it takes less than 12 minutes. Well, sometimes it takes longer than that. And with that said, let's begin. You find it difficult to introduce yourself to other people. Slightly disagree. You often get so lost in thoughts that you ignore or forget your surroundings. I would... I moderately disagree. You try to respond to your emails as soon as possible and cannot stand a messy inbox. Moderately agree. You find it easy to stay relaxed even when there is some pressure. Slightly disagree. You do not usually initiate conversations. Slightly disagree. You rarely do something just out of sheer curiosity. Hmm. I would actually... Slightly agree. You feel superior to other people. Slightly disagree. Being organized is more important to you than being adaptable. Matter, moderately agree. You are usually highly motivated and energetic. Moderately agree. Winning a debate matters less to you than making sure no one gets upset. Moderately agree. You often feel as if you have to justify yourself to other people. Slightly agree. Your home and work environments are quite tidy. Moderately agree. You do not mind being at the center of attention. Slightly disagree. You consider yourself more practical than creative. That one's neutral. People can rarely upset you. Slightly disagree. Your travel plans are usually well thought out. Another neutral. It is often difficult for you to relate to other people's feelings. Slightly agree, and your mood can change very quickly. Moderately agree. In a discussion, truth should be more important than people's sensitivities. Slightly disagree. You rarely worry about how, uh, you rarely worry about how your actions affect other people. Sorry for my stuttering. I would slightly disagree. Your work style is closer to random energy spikes than to a methodical and organized approach. Slightly disagree. You are often envious of others. Slightly disagree. An interesting book or a video game is often better than a social or event. Moderately agree. Being able to develop a plan and stick to it is the most important part of every project. Slightly agree. You rarely get carried away by fantasies and ideas. Slightly agree. You often find yourself lost in thought when you are walking in nature. S moderately disagree. If someone does not respond to your email quickly, you start worrying if you said something wrong. Slightly agree. As a parent, you would rather see your child grow up kind than smart. Moderately agree. You do not let other people influence your actions. Slightly agree. When you sleep, your dreams tend to focus on the real world and its events. Moderately disagree. It does not take you much time to start getting involved in social activities at your new workplace. Slightly disagree. You are more of a natural improviser than a careful planner. Slightly agree. Your emotions control you more than you control them. Slightly agree. You enjoy going to social events that involve dress up or role play activities. Slightly disagree. You often spend time exploring unrealistic and impractical yet intriguing ideas. I would slightly disagree. You would rather improvise than spend time coming up with a detailed plan. Neutral. You are a relatively reserved and quiet person. Slightly agree. If you had a business, you would find it very difficult to fire loyal but underperforming employees. 
partly agree. You often contemplate the reasons for human existence, moderately disagree. Logic is usually more important than heart when it comes to making important decisions. Slightly agree. Keeping your options open is more important than having a to-do list. Moderately agree. If your friend is sad about something, you are more likely to offer emotional support than suggest ways to deal with the problem. Slightly agree. You rarely feel insecure. Moderately agree. You have no difficulties coming up with a personal timetable and sticking to it. Slightly agree. Being right is more important than being cooperative when it comes to tea work. Hmm. I would slightly disagree to that statement. You think that everyone's views should be respected regardless of whether they are supported by facts or not. Moderately agree. You feel more energetic after just let me try that again. You feel more energetic after spending time with a group of people. Moderately disagree. You frequently misplace your things. Strongly disagree. You see yourself as very emotionally stable. Moderately agree. Your mind is always buzzing with unexplored ideas and plans. Moderately agree. You would not call yourself a dreamer. I would slightly agree. You usually find it difficult to relax when talking in front of many people. Slightly disagree. I don't have problems with speaking in front of other people. Public speaking is something that I like. Now it's not everyone's cup of tea, but I'm just one of the few. Generally speaking, you rely more on your experience than your imagination. Moderately agree. You worry too much about what other people think. Slightly disagree. If the room is full, you stay closer to the walls, avoiding the center. Slightly agree. You have a tendency to procrastinate until there is not enough time to do everything. Slightly disagree. You feel very anxious in stressful situations. Slightly agree. You believe that it is more rewarding to be liked by others than to be powerful. Moderately agree. You always have been interested in unconventional and ambiguous things like books, art, or movies. Moderately agree. You often take initiative in social situations. Slightly disagree. So let's take a peek and see what I am. I am a defender. In the mind, it looks like I am introverted. This trait determines how we interact with our environment. Energy, this trait shows where we direct our mental energy. I'm more observant. Nature, this trait determines how we make decisions and cope with emotions. Seems like I have more feeling than thinking. Tactics. This trait reflects our approach to work, planning, and decision making, judging at 64%. And identity. This trait underpins all others, showing how confident we are in our abilities and decisions. This was close, but by 1%, turbulent is the winner. Let's read in a little bit more. The defender personality type is un quite unique, as many of their qualities defy the definition of their individual traits. Though sensitive, defenders have excellent analytical abilities. Though reserved, they have well-developed people skills and robust social relationships. And though they are generally a conservative type, defenders are often receptive to change and new ideas. As with so many things, people with the defender personality type are more than the sum of their parts, and it is the way they use these strengths that defines who they are. Defenders are, out, are true altruists, meeting kindness with kindness in excess and engaging the work and people they believe in with enthusiasm and generosity. There's hardly a better type to make up such a large proportion of the population, nearly 13%. Combining the best of tradition and the desire to do good, defenders are found in lines of work with a sense of history behind them, such as medicine, academics, and charitable social work. Defender personalities, especially turbulent ones, are often meticulous to the point of perfectionism, and though they procrastinate, they can always be relied on to get the job done on time. That's very important because you don't want to uh, start a project and not get it done on time. Defenders take their responsibilities personally, consistently going above and beyond, doing everything they can to exceed expectations and delight others at work and at home. We must be seen to be believed. Why well, isn't that right? 
The challenge for defenders is ensuring is what that they do is noticed. They have a tendency to underplay their accomplishments, and while their kindness is often respected, more cynical and selfish people are likely to take advantage of defenders' dedication and humbleness by pushing work onto them and then taking the credit. Defenders need to know when to say no and to stand up for themselves if they are to maintain their confidence and enthusiasm. Naturally social, an odd quality for introverts, defenders utilize excellent memories not to retain data and trivia, but to remember people and details about their lives. When it comes to gift giving, defenders have no equal, using their imagination and natural sensitivity to express their generosity in ways that touch the hearts of their recipients. While this is certainly true of their co-workers, whom people with a defender personality type often consider their personal friends, it is in family that their expressions of, of, bleh, of affection fully bloom. Sorry about that. If I can protect you, I will. Defender personalities are a wonderful group, rarely sitting idle while a worthy cause remains unfinished. Defenders' ability to connect with others on an intimate level is unrivaled among introverts, and the joy they experience in using those connections to maintain a supportive, happy family is a gift for everyone involved. They may never be truly comfortable in the spotlight and may feel guilty taking due credit for team efforts, but if they can ensure that their efforts are recognized, defenders are likely to feel a level of satisfaction in what they do that many other personality types can only dream of. Here's a couple of examples of defenders. Got Halle Berry, Vin Diesel, Beyonce, Queen Elizabeth II. Ooh, Kate Middleton and Anne Hathaway. Selena Gomez? Dr. Watson. Elementary, my dear Watson. Vito Corleone of The Godfather. I find it kind of interesting that uh, fictional characters have uh, personalities, but it what gives their character dimension. Anyways, let's move on. Strengths and weaknesses. Strengths. Supportive. Defenders are the universal helpers, sharing their knowledge, experience, time, and energy with anyone who needs it, and all the more so with friends and family. People with this personality type strive for win-win situations, choosing empathy over judgment whenever possible. Reliable and patient. Rather than offering sporadic, excited rushes that leaves things half-finished, defenders are, more, are meticulous and careful, taking a steady approach and bending with the needs of this situation just enough to accomplish their end goals. Defenders not only ensure that things are done to the highest standard, but often go well beyond what is required. Imaginative and observant. Defenders are very imaginative and use this quality as an accessory to empathy, observing others' emotional states and seeing things from their perspective. With their feet firmly planted on the ground, it is a very practical imagination, though they do find things quite fascinating and inspiring. Enthusiastic. When the goal is right, defenders take all the support, reliability, and imagination and apply it to something they believe will make a difference in people's lives, whether fighting poverty with a global initiative or making a customer's day. That is very important because you want that customer to come back to you and continue business with you. And if you can't deliver, they're not going to come back. Loyal and hardworking. Given a little time, this enthusiasm grows into loyalty. Defender personalities often form an emotional attachment to the ideas and organizations they've dedicated themselves to. Anything short of meeting their obligations with good, hard work fails their own expectations. Good practical skills. The best part is defenders have the practical sense to actually do something with all this altruism. If mundane, routine tasks are what need to be done, defenders can see the beauty and harmony that they create because they know that it helps them to care for their friends, family, and anyone else who needs it. Weaknesses. Humble and shy. The meek shall inherit the earth, but it's a long road if they receive no recognition at all. This is possibly Defender's biggest challenge, as they are so concerned with others' feelings that they refuse to make their thoughts known or to take any duly earned credit for their contributions. Defender's standards for themselves are also so high that, knowing they could have done some minor aspect of a task better, they often downplay their successes entirely. Taking things too personally. Defenders have trouble separating personal and impersonal situations. Any situation is still an interaction between two people, after all, and any negativity from conflict or criticism can carry over from their professional to their personal lives and back again. Repress their feelings. People with the defender personality type are private and very sensitive, internalizing their feelings a great deal. Much in the way that defenders protect others' feelings, they must protect their own, and this lack of healthy emotional expression can lead to a lot of stress and frustration. 
overload themselves, their strong senses of duty and perfectionism combined with this aversion to emotional conflict to create a situation where it is far too easy for defenders to overload themselves or to be overloaded by others as they struggle silently to meet everyone's expectations, especially their own. Reluctant to change, these challenges can be practically hard to address since defender personalities value traditions and history highly in their decisions. A situation sometimes needs to react a breaking point before defenders are persuaded by circumstance or the strong personality of a loved one to alter course. Too altruistic. This is all compounded and reinforced by defenders' otherwise wonderful quality of altruism. Being such warm, good-natured people, defenders are willing to let things slide, to believe that things will get better soon, to not burden others by accepting their offers of help while their troubles mount unassisted. Why is that true? Romantic Relationships when it comes to romantic relationships, defenders' kindness grow into a joy that is only found in taking care of their family and home, in being there for emotional and practical support whenever it's needed. Home is where the heart is for people with the defender personality type, and in no other area of their lives do they strive with such dedication to create the harmony and beauty they wish to see in the world. The, tr the trouble is, these are the benefits of an established long-term relationship. And Defender's unbearable shyness means it can take a long time to reach this point. Defenders are most attractive when they are simply being themselves in a comfortable environment such as work, where their natural flow shows this kindness and dedication. Relationships built on established familiarity are a warm prospect for defenders. They take dating seriously and only enter into relationships that have a real chance of lasting a lifetime. Our upward course is due to our soundness of heart. Defenders' shyness and sensitivity shield what are, beneath the surface, incredibly strong feelings. While not always obvious to others, this river of emotion can't be taken lightly or for granted. Defender personalities can value the idea of committed romance almost as highly as some regard religious beliefs. Hard as it may be, if either dating partners doubt their feelings, they must part ways before real emotional damage is done. Boy, some people wait till the last minute to uh, part ways before things go from bad to worse. As their relationships do progress, defenders often continue to struggle with emotional expression, but they have the opportunity to let physical affection stand in for their own or for their loving words. Excuse me. People with this personality type take no greater joy than in pleasing others, often even considering this a personal duty, and this applies to intimacy as well. While dutiful sex may not sound especially attractive in those specific terms, intimacy is tremendously important to defenders, and they spare no effort in this department nor is the pleasure they take in ensuring their partner's happiness limited to the bedroom. Defenders spend an enormous amount of time and energy finding ways to keep their relationship satisfying to their partners. All they ask in return is commitment, love, and perhaps most of all, appreciation. I agree with that statement 100%. Like all the best families, we have our disagreements. Ain't that right? However, not everyone is prepared to pay even that small price for the benefits of defender's kindness if their partners aren't willing or able to express this thanks, or worse, still are openly critical of their defender partners, they will find that, given time and pressure, all of those repressed emotions can burst forth in massive verbal attacks that all the future regret in the world won't blunt. These outbursts are something to watch out for. But the more pervasive issue in defender's relationship is that it can be too easy for their altruism and kindness to be taken advantage of, maybe even without their partners realizing it, while leaving defender's own needs and dreams unfulfilled. This is something that defender's partners and defender personalities themselves must look after if they want to. The sort of long, fulfilling relationships they dream about. Expressing appreciation is often more than just the right words. It is reciprocation. If these couples can manage this balance of mutual appreciation and goal setting, they will come to find that the best offender qualities emerge later in the relationship as they work towards establishing families and homes together. While perfectly capable in the workplace and among friends, defender true passions lie in taking care of their families, from playing with their children to the mundane needs of the household. Efforts defenders are only too happy to contribute. Defenders are trustworthy, loyal, loving, and faithful, and nothing brings them more joy than the commitment of an appreciative and thriving relationship. The best matches are those who share these sensibilities, namely those who share the observant S trait, with one or two opposing traits to ensure that both partners have room to grow, develop, and help each other along till the end of their days. Friendships. Given how generous defenders are with their warm praise and support, it's not surprising that others enjoy their company enough to call them friends. The challenge is to be considered a friend back. People with the defender personality tip are shy and a little protective of themselves, but they also need to be able to connect on a deeper emotional level. It makes sense then that most defenders of friends are 
excuse me, let me try that again, that most of Defender's friends are made not by random encounters on a wild night out, but through comfortable and consistent contact as in class or in the workplace where they have the time to get to know each other little by little. You know, let me just stop here for a minute and say this. This is how it should be. Whether you're looking for a friend or trying to get into a relationship, you have to take it with baby steps. If you get two, if you try to take one giant step, you'll probably end up with this with a disastrous result, and either the friendship or the relationship isn't going to work. Anyways, a lot of what establishes and deepens Defender friendship is the mutual support, advice, and reassurance that the friends give each other. Defenders need a lot of positive feedback, and admitting this need certainly shows vulnerability. But if that vulnerability is well handled, it creates the deep bonds that Defender personalities look for. If badly handled or not reciprocated, it's hard to see the burgeoning friendship striving without quite a bit of extra effort. Yet as their friendship develop, Defender's sense of loyalty may push them to lean ever more on themselves to meet their friends' needs to the point of neglecting their own. Defenders show this in a few ways, from going clearly out of their ways to stick to even trivial commitments, to simply not wanting to disagree or say no for fear of causing turbulence. More cynical types would call this naive. It may even take advantage of defenders' altruism, but these are hardly the type of people who we, we call friends, and they have no business being discussed here. To what greater inspiration and counsel can we turn? The real friends, those close inner circles, are the ones defenders truly cherish for their quality of character and quality of discussion. Defenders aren't particularly picky about what personality types they make friends with, at least not initially, but because they prefer so strongly to avoid conflict and miscommunication, most of their friends are likely to end up being fairly similar personalities. Parenthood. Defenders' warmth and care makes parenting something that often comes naturally to them. Many people with this personality type feel like parenting is the task they were born for, taking no small pleasure in the sense of personal importance and responsibility they feel in ensuring that their children grow up to be healthy, confident, and successful. At the same time, defenders are anything but arrogant and will hardly take their natural skill in this department for granted. From the start, defenders' altruism is apparent in their approach towards their children, ensuring that they have a safe, stable environment filled with love, care, and support. Well, that should be in all households, making sure that their children have love, care, and support, period. In their children's younger years, Defender's patience comes in very handy as well as their children learn to become more independent and self-deterministic, testing any limit they can find. Seeing the world in its true light, it is this transition, though, from the utter dependence of infants to the insatiable exploration of toddlers and young children to the rejection of authority of adolescents that Defenders are taken by surprise. Very traditionally personality types, defenders accept historic standards with clearly defined roles as parents and children. They view their roles, and often rightly so, as the imparter of their wis own wisdom and values, Excuse me, ensuring that their children understand the importance of dedication and responsibility. What many defender parents may not realize is that more independent children often reject the seemingly overbearing love and support that make defender personalities such wonderful parental figures. They wish to determine their own values and make their own choices, and defenders' good intentions can make them feel like every aspect of their lives is sealed off and controlled. All the while, defender parents must ensure that more dependent children, who are willing to lean on all of this care and support rather than rebel against it, do not take these admirable qualities for granted, neglecting their own independence entirely. Do right even if we suffer in doing Defenders are uncomfortable when their children don't behave as expected, and oftentimes more insightful children see and sometimes exploit this potential weakness with tantrums and mind games. It takes a strong will for defenders to put their foot down and teach clear and reasonable boundaries and values, while at the same time affording their children the freedom to grow and develop on their own. Parenting is not easy for any personality type. Not if they're doing it right, but defenders do have the advantage of not just being caring, but being thoughtful and responsible in how they administer that care. Often seen as ideal parents, people with the defender personality type are able to be there for their children, but to also know that there's more to people than meets the eye and to respect those differences, if not always to understand them. Career Paths In many ways, defenders are the backbone of the modern workforce, altruistic and well-rounded. No other personality type is so well suited to be of service to others. It is no surprise that many defenders are not just good at supporting their co-workers and customers in human resources and support positions, they generally enjoy it as it gives them the chance to calm frustrations, see things through to a practical solution, and to be thanked, appreciated, at the close of each ordeal. 
Sorry about that. Be humble and earnest. Defenders are skilled at remembering things about others which make them not only valuable assistants, but well like colleagues. People with the defender personality type can always be counted on to remember a birthday, a graduation, or simply a frequent customer's name, and that can make all the difference. Add to these amiable qualities defenders meticulousness, hard work, and dedication, and it's no surprise that their careers often progress smoothly with few of the ups and downs that accompany more high-flying types. However, defenders are unlikely to actively seek out managerial positions and are still more unlikely to brag about their accomplishments. Now, there's a fine line between being proud of your accomplishments and brag about your accomplishments. And it doesn't take much to tilt the scale in one direction or the other. Defender personalities prefer to be rewarded by seeing firsthand at the positive impact of their expert. Let me try that again. Defender personalities prefer to be rewarded by seeing firsthand the positive impact of their efforts and will remain enthusiastic simply knowing that due is genuinely appreciated by the people they care for. This makes them natural counselors, technical support, and interior designers, where they are able to help others one-on-one -on -one without having to worry about corporate politics. Whether they seek promotion or not, it happens often enough, as defenders' ability to implement ideas and create order from chaos is bound to make an impression. Respecting tradition and security, defenders have no problem with the idea of moving along in a structured hierarchy, and while they may not always seek out these managerial positions, they fill them well. Defenders are well-tuned to others' emotions and have a strong sense of practicality, extending their own ability to get things done to their teams. Where defenders struggle is in generating new ideas and in grasping abstract concepts, fields like academic research and corporate strategy are too intangible and too impersonal to utilize defenders' strengths. Similar challenges arise in more typical careers when changes are forced through by defenders' employers. Advanced warning and a proper explanation can help to smooth the shock, but if the changes cut back on things like the quality of customer service, it can feel like a betrayal in the face of their loyalty and dedication. Live pleasantly and do good. Strong, well-developed institutions alongside like-minded friends are attractive workplaces for people with the defender personality type, and careers as nurses, elementary school teachers, and social and religious workers are attractive options. Sometimes the desire to help others is enough in itself. It's not uncommon to find defenders volunteering and helping the community at shelters, food banks, and their children's schools. Defenders are warm, service-oriented people, and hardly anyone is more welcome in these and many, many other roles. Workplace Habits Whether subordinates, colleagues, or managers, defenders share the goal of putting good service and dedication above all else. Whether helping customers directly, helping coworkers get projects finished on time, or helping teams keep organized and productive, people with the defender personality type can always be relied on for their kindness and ability to listen to concerns and to find ways to resolve them. Win-win situations are defenders' bread and butter, and no one takes quite the same pleasure in finding satisfying resolutions to day-to-day -day challenges. Defender Subordinates as subordinates, defenders exemplify the strength of humble dedication, relying on and respected for their patience and commitment. Defender personalities really only seek one reward for their work, the satisfaction of knowing that whoever they help feels heartfelt thanks. On the other hand, this humbleness can hold them back. Defenders are quite unwilling to advertise their achievements, often for fear of creating unnecessary friction, which makes it too easy for them to be overlooked when opportunities come along. Boy, that happens quite a bit in the workplace. Defenders are people of incredible loyalty, often trying to follow favored managers to new positions and locations. This contrasts with their usual feelings on change, which, if it compromises their principles, as cutbacks to customer care might, is met with stress and unhappiness. Though perfectly capable of accepting change, defenders must feel that it's for the right reasons. If a policy change results in disappointed customers, defenders take it very personally. Colleagues. Among their colleagues, people with this personality types seek a frictionless environment, a spirit of friends helping friends to get the job done. Close-knit and supportive teams are what defenders enjoy most, allowing them to express their altruistic spirit among people who rely on their dedication and warmth. Defenders are natural networkers, but they use the skill to keep things running smoothly, not as a tool for professional advancement. These qualities can be drawbacks, though, as defenders' aversion to conflict and desire to help can be abused by less scrupulous colleagues. Instead of only asking for help when they need it, some may ask for help when they just don't feel like working hard, knowing that their defender colleagues have a hard time saying no. The result is that defenders can become overburdened and stressed, and it takes a few good workplace friends to put pressure on these less savory characters in order to maintain balance. Defender Managers 
While management isn't necessarily at the top of defenders' list of goals, it is a natural progression as their hard work and good people skills are recognized over the years. Oftentimes, they don't actually enjoy managing others, but this can be one of their greatest strengths. As managers, defenders are warm, approachable, and great listeners. Having no real desire to issue authoritarian dictates from some higher po or tower. Let me try that again. Having no real desire to issue authoritarian sorry for mispronunciation, dictates from some high tower, defender personalities prefer to work alongside their subordinates, organizing people and minimizing conflict. This helps them to create personal relationships with their subordinates, to be the friends in the workplace who simply have different sets of responsibilities. While they may be slow to accept some changes, they are great at helping their teams put them into practice once they've been agreed on. Defenders may be too sensitive to be fully executive material, but they make exemplary floor and office managers who know what it takes to satisfy their customers. Conclusion Few personality types are as practical and dedicated as defenders. Known for their reliability and hard work, defenders are good at creating and maintaining a secure and stable environment for themselves and their loved ones. Defenders' dedication is invaluable in many areas, including their own personal growth. Yet defenders can be easily tripped up in areas where their kind and practical attitude is more of a liability than an asset. Whether it is navigating interpersonal conflicts, confronting unpleasant facts, pursuing self-realization, or managing your workload, you need to put it in a conscious effort to develop your weaker traits and additional skills. What you have read so far is just an introduction and less than 5% of what we can tell you about the defender personality type. You may have muttered to yourself, wow, this is so accurate, it's creepy, or they know more about me more. Let me try that again. Or they know more about me than people I'm closest to. And you may even be a little uncomfortable because you are a private person and not really used to seeing your thoughts explained in this way. This is not a trick. You felt understood because you were. And no, we did not spy on you. Rather, we spent years studying defenders' life stories, experiences, and responses to hundreds of our surveys. Step by step, insight by insight, we discover exactly how defenders think and what they need to reach their full potential. This is how we know that many of the challenges you face and will face in the future have been overcome by other defenders. You are not alone in this. You simply need to learn from mistakes and successes of others. Well, that's life right there. But in order to do that, you need a roadmap that fits your needs. Life is too short to stumble around grasping at scattered and contradictory advice that may work for others, but not you. We now need to go much deeper into the defender mind and answer why, how, and what if. Are you ready to learn why defenders act in the way they do? What motivates and inspires you? What are you afraid of and what you secretly dream about? How can you unlock your potential while also staying true to who you are? Our academy provides a roadmap towards a more confident, happier, and successful you. It's not for everyone. You need to be willing to challenge yourself, to face your fears, and to ask and answer questions you haven't asked yourself before. This is not a quick fix solution, nor an easy shortcut. Our goal is to help you grow and to and become the person you are meant to be, not to simply give you a comfortable mask to put on. Are you ready to begin your journey? Then continue to the next session. We'll be waiting for you in the academy. All right, I'm gonna stop it here and say, that is my personality test. Like I said, you can just go to the website of 16personalities.com and take the free test. It usually takes about 12 minutes, but sometimes it might take 15 to 20 because some of the questions are a little bit deeper and you may have to think a little bit more. And with that said, I will see you guys later.